Huh? Oh, no, I'm taking turn your picture, ready? <laughs> um, hey, wait, let's take a picture of this. Pulling in the first half of the night isn't that big of a deal. And it's almost like I've, I think I'd even do it more than the second half of the night because if they're coming back, like when, when they're when you're trying to pull in the second half of the night, like she's committing to like leaving the whatever kind of event, she's like missing out on hanging out with her friends and the DJ and everything else, and she's okay, I'm going, I'm committing to this guy for the rest of the night. It's almost like a little bit more compliance than to say let's go rip some shots and come right back. Okay? And lots of times when you go to rip the shots, like you're gonna end up like making out in the car, you're gonna hooking up at your house, and like you might not even go back out. Okay? And now we're gonna watch a real life infield. Um, why I pull a nine and then afterwards after the infield make sure you stick around to the end because we're gonna go over like Showing like scenes from her being my fuck buddy like her getting ready to go out for a night I was doing like a wet t-shirt contest with her and I blurred the nipples when, when her shirt gets wet so that I don't know it's a lot on YouTube or whatever But thank you guys for watching. That's how you pull in the first half of the night So go out and try it. It's fucking easy. Okay, and don't pay attention to whether what time of the night is when you're trying to pull All right, so here we go without further ado. We're gonna move on to the infield breakdown I say, I want to meet you, I saw you earlier, I wanted to meet you. Are you Latina? Are you Latina? A lot of times I'll ask them about their ethnicity. She very obviously was Latina, so that's why I said it. Are you Latina? Yeah. I just moved here from Puerto Rico, I was living there for like a year. So I'm like, I just moved here from Puerto Rico, I was living there for a year. So what I'll do typically, if they're like ethnic, is I'll try to guess their ethnicity and then they'll tell me. And I've traveled all over the world at this point, so a lot of times I've been to where they are from. Like if, if it's an Asian chick, I'll be like, Oh, you still live in Beijing, and like it was crazy being six foot four because all the people, the chicks are short, and girls would take selfies with me, ha ha ha. Or the parts of Europe I can relate to that. Whatever it may be, but if it's a place I haven't been, I would usually say that I've I've lived there for some period of time. So like with Brazilian girls, they're like, oh yeah, hey, I'm from Brazil. I'll be like, oh cool, I used to live in Sao Paulo for like three months, right? Like I know which cities are in which countries that are like the popular cities, and I'll just use that as like a talking point. I'll just I'll just make it up, okay? It helps, it helps you kind of like relate to them. You don't have to do that, that's just what I do. What? I was just living in Puerto Rico for a year. I yeah, fucking, I, I, I really like Latinas. I want to talk to you a thing. <laughs> so, here, here's us talking. So, <clears throat> I'm going to explain to, here, to you guys what just happened here. So this is like the hottest chick in the bar this night. I would rate like a 9. You're going you're gonna to see better pictures of her body later on. Um, better video clips of her body. But... She has no investment bill with me at this point, right? All I've done is opened her. She tried to like walk away and like sidestep me. And I said, hold on, I want to talk to you real quick. I want to just talk to you real quick. I, I kind of like move a little bit and like play it off. Like it's not a big deal, right? She has no investment and she's really hot. So she's getting hit up by a lot of dudes. And most dudes are usually low value. So, you know, that was just like some token shit where like I'm talking to her and she kind of like stepped to the side a little bit. I was like, hold on, I want to talk to you real quick. What well, Latina are you? I'm Peter. Puerto Rican. So I'm like, what kind of Latina are you? She's like Puerto Rican, which obviously she didn't hear me before saying I lived in Puerto Rico because she didn't comment on that when I said that I lived there. So now I'm like building rapport over that about how I live there. No shit! I just told you I was living in Puerto Rico for a year. I thought I knew. I like you. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm just flirting with her. Keep in mind I'm like, I'm 6'4", so I'm having to bend down, but I'm like in her physical space. I have my one arm around her back. And I'm like... Yeah, I could tell you're Puerto Rican, ha ha ha. And, and now everything that's flowing out of me is these subcommunications, right? Like these positive alpha subcommunications. So, <clears throat> an important point to make is that watch my video, uh, Mindsets to Have in the Club, but I'm not like rolling in to the club or into any interaction doubting whether or not I'm going to get the girl. I, I go into the club assuming I can get any girl in there. Before I approach a girl, I assume, yes, of course she's going to like me. Yes, of course it's going to go awesome. There's a high chance I'm going to pull her, blah, blah, blah. And all that flows out through my subcommunications, right? And the story I told and the, the part that just got deleted, the story I told, I was running a boot camp in like 2014 with an Indian kid, virgin. And he was like, dude, he's like, the reason why girls are so receptive to you is because you've been with hundreds of girls. I think I was at like 250 count or three, 300 or maybe 300, 350. And he's like, you've been with a lot of girls at this point, and so they can sense that, and that's why they like you. And he's like, I've been with zero, so that's why they don't like me. And I was like, listen, dude, you don't have a fucking post-it note on your forehead 
that advertises your lay count. I mean, if I close tonight, I actually have a, a print on my shirt advertising my lay count. <laughs> but I was like, if I rolled up weak, like this was during the boot camp, I was, like, I was like, if I rolled up weak and I was like, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm like the chick doesn't know that I've been with 300 something girls. She's going to fucking think I'm a loser because I'm rolling in weak and all my sub communications communicate that. If I doubted that I could get her, or I thought I wasn't good enough or I, th I was trying to win her over or whatever, rather than just assuming all those things and assuming I'm awesome and assuming I'm the shit, then she would probably blow me off pretty quickly and she wouldn't become attracted to me. So I'm like, you need to roll in thinking you're the shit. No one here knows your lay count. You could be like a fucking rock star. Okay. You're not dressing like one. We, we fix that too, but, um, <laughs> Or having the hygiene of a normal person. But he ended up getting two makeouts and he fucking pulled the girl. And me and my old business partner that was running the program, me, we joked that he was like the coolest version in the club. And it was just like a fucking switch in his mind where he realized that he doesn't need to um, have that negative mindset. And chicks will respond to him if he believes that he's cool and awesome. And he carries that in his presence. The chicks are going to believe that he's cool and awesome. All right, so I'm just acting like the man here. And the chick is being very receptive to it. Like, contrast that to if I was, like, stiff and robotic and I wasn't having direct eye contact and I wasn't leaning in and putting my hand around her back and, like, talking like I'm the man. Like, she can feel all this shit coming off me. Like, this guy already knows he's going to bang me, right? Like, this guy, like, is here to bang me. Like, he does this all the time. That's what's being communicated. Okay? And this Indian kid, it just switched. So you have to go in, and I, I will make a, a separate video on inner game. But the strongest inner game mindsets are to think you're the shit, think that you're awesome, think that you can get any girl in the club, and then you're going to actually sub-communicate all that, and the girls are going to respond positively to it. And then you're going to have empirical data to look at and say, look, I actually am the man. I'm fucking all these hot chicks, right? And the, the quantity of the number of girls you bang will go up as a result, and the quality, your average quality of how hot the girls are will go up as well over time. All right, so moving on. I was living in Puerto Rico the past year. <laughs> like I was living in Puerto Rico this past year. I was living in the past year. Okay, now she says, do you have a cigarette? To me, this is like music to my ears because if you watch my night game video, I talk about how you need to isolate, right? Because she has friends. I usually isolate to the bar, but it's more preferable to isolate to the smoking section because why? It's closer to the cabs. Okay, so it's, they call that baby step in the pool. You're getting her like basically closer to like your final goal, which is taking her home, which requires getting a cab. So she is like a smoker. So she's suggesting we go out and have cigarettes. Now I don't carry cigarettes around. So you'll see in, in a minute here, I instruct my cameraman to like try to find a cigarettes and all this shit. I end up like buying one from a guy out in the smoking section. But now my isolation is solved, assuming I can find a cigarette because she doesn't have any. But now we're gonna be moving out to the smoking section and in my mind, I'm like, awesome. I'm going to convince her outside there to pull, answer her objections. We're going to get in the cab. Okay. And also, you're going to see coming up in a second, um, she gives me that the traditional, like, doggy dinner bowl look. If you, For those of you that read the, the book, The Game, they talk about, it, like, when a dog's, like, about to eat and it's, like, salivating. It has, like, these puppy eyes. Um, also, there's a term, I think, RSD's term, anime eyes. Basically, it's just, like, the girls, like, telegraphing, like, looking at you, like, like she wants to kiss you, right? And see how I'm like holding her on one side with my hand. I have an arm around her back. I'm kind of like in her personal space and, and she gives me this look, so I just start kissing her. Can I kiss you? Are you okay? Can I kiss you? I was already way up in her personal space at that point. Our face was like this far apart. <coughs> Fucking sneezing. Ugh. Sorry. Okay. Now, I talk about my night game video. I would normally go for like a long makeout, okay? And then start talking dirty, start talking about how we're gonna fuck, all this shit. But in this particular situation, um, that would actually go against my agenda because we already have agreed to go out to the smoking section, which is near the cab. So if we're like standing inside, like making out all this time, it's a better move to, to direct things more towards the cab in this situation. Okay, that's so what you see here. We don't go for like a long makeout. Puerto Ricans are my favorite now. I'm like Puerto Ricans are my favorite. That's like a <laughs> my face here. 
that's like a funny or not funny like uh like a fun qualification thing i don't again i don't do qualification but latinas are my favorite not necessarily puerto ricans but i do like latinas but i'm just kind of like making her feel special and unique here like oh puerto ricans are my favorite okay you like Nicki Jam? Now I'm like trying to relate to her. Like, do you like Nicki Jam, which is like one of the famous reggaeton dudes in uh, Puerto Rico? So here's what I'm talking about, cameraman. We need a cigarette right now. Ask a bunch of people for a cigarette. Buy one if you have to. So normally my cameraman just follows me right outside when I isolate or when I'm pulling. Um, when I've had like six different cameramen over the years, but, but you know they're usually pretty good about st like sticking on me. Um, in this particular case, you can't hear him because the, the mic is on me. Like the oh, I talked about my last video too. Okay, here's my setup for the for the infield filming. I'm using a GoPro Hero Four. Um, with modified lens for night vision, and then it has like an IR array, infrared, not visible to the human eye, but it kind of illuminates things for the camera. And then I'm using like a Sennheiser, like high-end lavalier mic that goes underneath the inside of my collared shirt. And the chick is like usually shorter than me, and she, well, almost always shorter than me, and she's talking like almost directly into it because I'm taller. And then it's a cardioid pattern which means that it captures like the space immediately in front of you pretty clearly and then it cuts out background noise that cuts it cuts it down so it helps cut through the club music that's perfect for infield filming you can't hear the cameraman basically all, all he's doing here is asking for a cigarette from multiple people and trying to buy one and most people don't have one and then he comes and joins me outside When you um, demonstration of higher value is basically like when I say DJ, it, it, it implies a whole bunch of stuff. I know a lot of people. I have an adventurous life. My life's more fun than hers. I have access to a lot of women, etc., etc. Okay. Wait, Jason, wait one sec. Come here. Here. Now I'm, I'm telling, uh, I think one of my wings outside, this is the hottest chick here. Can we grab can we buy a cigarette for you guys? Alright, so now I'm asking, you can't see on that video yet because the cameraman is still asking inside, he's gonna come out and join me soon. I'm asking guys on the side if I can buy a cigarette off them. So I buy like two cigarettes off them for like a dollar or two. And again, I just need this because the reason why her and I went outside is to smoke. I normally don't smoke. I'll make a video on how to prevent damage from alcohol and cigarette smoke and stuff like that using supplements. Um, but in this case, this is the reason why we're outside. So that so I'm getting a cigarette, buying one off these guys, so that her and I can socially smoke. And I'm gonna lay down the pole language and then try to pull her. I just got this. Oh, can we buy one off you guys? Just fucking go through the whole thing. Can I buy one off you, bro? Can I buy one off you? Can I buy a cigarette? How much? Okay, sure. Fuck, bro. There we go. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. All right, there's me buying cigarettes. In the meantime, my formal loyal friend, Chris Parker, happens to be out with me this night. And I will make a whole separate video blasting him in the next couple of weeks. He's a fucking asshole. Um, and a loser. But here's the thing. Like a super quick summary. I taught this kid a boot camp in 2012. It was his first foray into game. I was already at like 150. Or no, I was at like 130 or so at that time. 
And then I, I taught him again in January of 2016. And he actually was somewhat of a close friend just because I had known him for like five years and he took two programs with me and I answered a lot of game questions for him. And then when I was coming together with the final version of my product um, in 2016, I needed someone to transcribe all the audio module um, teaching courses into text and to ebooks. And he volunteered to do it and I asked him to sign an NDA. He told me he would, but then he never did. He kept making excuses. And directly after that, he became Chris Parker and started teaching boot camps using my methods. And then about a year later, I was pissed about that, but I was like, ah, I'll just keep him as a friend for now. And a year later, he fucking put out a product that rips off a whole bunch of my shit. And it's a way watered down version of my stuff, but he literally copy pasted parts out of my book, out of my program, okay? Insane, insanity. And I, I will show you guys, I'll show you the, the parts of, that he copied and all stuff. And he has like 12 total polls in that program. I know for a fact he had a monogamous girlfriend at that time, so none of his polls closed. And I've seen him in field, he gets wrecked. He's like a little like twerpy looking kid. I denounced him as a friend once I saw that he copied a bunch of my product and now he's running around trying to talk trash on me just because I publicly blasted him and all this stuff. Whatever, a whole bunch of drama. But you're gonna see him being a great friend and, and escalating on my chick. What I said in the, in the last version that just got deleted, you guys need firm lines in the sand with your guy friends, with your wingmen. I usually give my wingmen like one free card unless it was like really over the top. Like if they fucking go after one of my chicks or they like hit on my fuck buddy or cross the line any of those ways, and then they're done. Like I've, I've dropped a bunch of friends, I've dropped a bunch of wings, and it's really a huge loss for them because I was a great resource I was a, for game, I was a great wingman to them. I've never done that shit once to a friend, okay? I've, and I've had plenty of opportunities. It's a very important loyalty principle for me. I won't game my friend's girls. I've even had, like, my friend, like, will have a fuck buddy over or something and he'll, like, ask to go... Or he'll go to pick up food or whatever, and his girl will, like, try to, like, give me a blowjob or something. And, uh, of course, I won't do it. And then I'll, like, tell my friend. I'll be like, dude, drop this piece of shit, right? It's, like, fucking bullshit. And, but I have friends that try to do this kind of shit to me. Like, they, they, they try to, like, one-up Jamal. All- they're like, oh, like, let me see if I... Like, you're going to see Chris Parker try to, like, earn points on the scorecard here, like, against me and shit. Which is totally ridiculous. This is my set, and he, he's just fucking... You know, putting it in jeopardy. It turns out fine. I won't, I won't go on and on about it. I'm going to put out a video about this kid. He's a fucking loser. And I blurred his face. I don't even know why. This is a waste, waste of my editor's time. But here we go. Because it's not even his fucking real name. It's, he's using alien. Hello, dude. Okay, here he is. Gaming up my chick. And then he gets physical with her, which is really nice. I didn't even realize this until I watched the infield later. As I'm getting a cigarette for this chick. From this other dude. He's broke. He's dangerous, I know. He's dangerous. He's a good guy. Here we go. Yo. Okay, so it makes sense to me too. Have you ever been in Puerto Rico? Every time they talk to your girl, they get like, her, like he's like trying to like play it off to my my cameraman, like he he's somehow in the right here for being physical. There was another situation where he like was was like walking off like to the bathroom with one of my fuck buddies holding her hand and I like fucking shoved him down and he's like, Oh, it's not what you think. I'm like, motherfucker, you're holding the girl's hand. So like, cool, I'm just helping her get to the bathroom. it's like shut the fuck up. Like these guys try to like play totally innocent when they when they pull this shit. Like he almost got cut off at that point. I don't know I don't know why I let him stick around. And then he goes and fucking rips off my product. Yeah, he's gonna get fully blasted. Um all right, moving on. And so the, the correct move for those watching, like he's trying to like gain value points and stuff here for himself. Like he should be rolling off at this point, not not trying to like monkey wrench my shit or like make me look worse. They're always the first of all, I was like two yeah. years old. First of all, I want to explain something to you. All right, now listen to what I say here. This is like a pretty important point. When I walked in this bar, I'm just going to be straight up. I saw your nibbles hard in that shirt. And I was like, I'm in love. That's it. All right, so now, I just said something very over the top. I said, when I walked in this bar, I saw your nipples hard. <laughs> and I said, and I thought I was in love. Now, it's over the top, but I'm saying it in a funny way, and I'm owning it, right? And I'm, I'm speaking sexually about her body, and it's, it's coming from, like, a manly place, not a fucking weird or creepy place. I'm getting married. Guys, it's nice knowing you. I'm not single anymore. She told me she likes my teeth. I was like... He retorts 
Mer tries to get involved in this fun by saying she told me she likes my teeth. Let's keep moving. Like, you do have very nice teeth. Yeah, yeah. Think she's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, yo. All right, now, now it's like now it's to the point where like I need to like shut it down because like he's like do you see do you see this kind of bullshit like. Here, I've, I've already kissed this girl, I've isolated her outside. I need to be like running like point logistics now and being one-on-one -on -one with her making out more. I don't, we don't need, the, don't do this kind of shit to your friends. This kid's a fucking asshole in the first place. It's not like I was ever at risk of losing, like this kid, if you see this kid in real life, I'm gonna show pictures, he's like five, six. Like I like tower over him, like he looks like a little child next to me. He's like, he looks like twerpy and shit. But he's just trying to like say some fancy stuff and, and whatever. It's completely unnecessary for him to be around at this point. And it's just detracting. I'm, I'm going to pull her in about six minutes from now anyways, but still, it's totally unnecessary for him to be in there. Yeah. I, I saw, saw, I saw the fucking nipples, nipples and I was just like, like that, that is really that nice example. and I want to suck nice. on them. All right, so now I'm, <laughs> now I'm like, those nipples were really nice. I saw them and I wanted to suck on them. Okay, just watching my, my battery here, my computer, it's like 15%. Okay. So listen to how she reacts about this. Oh I'm my like, god! Can we lick him through your shirt? What the fuck is wrong with you? Alright, she's saying it in a funny way though, like, she's not like weirded out or creeped out. I'm just openly being like, damn, you have like fucking nice ass nipples, I wanna suck on them. But I'm like saying it unapologetically, it's coming from manly place. Like basically implying like I'm going to suck on them, I'm going to bang you. <laughs> See, she's laughing. <laughs> Who are you here with? No, she's not wearing a fucking bra. Chris Parker's like, are you wearing a bra? Like very clearly not, you can see her entire fucking tits with the nipples there. Now I'm like, who are you here with? Logistical question to find out if I have to deal with cock blocks. here with my friend and I, I met a bunch of fives at the bar. Oh, no, bunch of, you said you met a bunch of fives? No, I met a bunch of She said she met a bunch of guys at the bar. I'm joking because it sounded like she said she met a bunch of fives. Yeah, I know. Everyone's ugly in there. I met a bunch of fives because I couldn't find my friend and they were just like... Oh, forget about him. Okay, so let me explain with you. Literally, the, uh, the past year of my life, I spent in Puerto Rico. I just went back. All right, finally, fucking loser rolls off last week. Because I need there's like there's basically, there's basically I just had to like kind of like stall a little bit because I can't like fucking work all the the shit with him actively gaming here on the side. It's unnecessary and retarded in the first place. I was living in uh, San Juan, right? You know, San Juan. All right, so she's looking off to the side, so I tap her to like re regain some attention. I told her I was living in San Juan. I'm like kind of like trying to build a rapport here because she's from Puerto Rico. No way. What part? San Juan. No, no, no. She's from San Juan. I, I was living in Puerto Rico last year because I had 4% flat tax in my non-pickup business, my affiliate marketing stuff. You lose like 50% in the high brackets in New York and California. And Puerto Rico, it's 4% flat if you establish your LLC there and you're a resident there. But I was almost killed like multiple times just from random gun violence at bars and stuff like that. So I got the fuck out of there. It's, it's kind of like a war zone over there. It's not worth the tax savings. But now Trump has the 21% rolling out for corporations. All right, so. I don't like, know. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm like asking a question of where she moved away from there when she was like a little kid or something, so she doesn't know shit about Puerto Rico. <laughs> so now I'm like teasing her for not knowing about Puerto Rico, physically escalating. So here, let me I said, like, do you like Spanish girls? I'm like, yeah, so now it's like really on. This is like, the, this is what it means to be on, right? Like for those of you that are like, how do I know if she likes me? Like, how do I know if it's like on? Okay, first of all, I've already kissed her, but it, all my sub communicate, like it's so powerful to just assume you're taking her home. Okay, because then everything you do and say comes from that place and the girl buys into it as well. I'm gonna have to plug this battery in soon. Let's fuck this computer. Well, I mean, that's all I had up for, for the past year. But I like sorry. And I'm like, yeah, that's all I had was Latinas the past year because I was living in fucking Puerto Rico. You and I'm like, that girl looks yeah, like the right. kind of girl I've never even saw her. What do you think of me? <laughs> now I'm like, I can tell this girl's Puerto Rican. Now I'm like, what do you think of me? Ha ha ha. Because I was like, I recognize you as Puerto Rican. I'm a tall, I'm a six foot four woman. How tall are you? You know how much I destroyed in Puerto Rico with the ladies? <laughs> now I'm like, <laughs> a lot of this stuff, what you guys would think is like, like big no no's or whatever. Like I'm telling her to her face, I destroyed in Puerto Rico with the ladies because I'm so tall and I have blue eyes, and I'm just I'm just telling her about this. But you have to you have to realize like everything is about frame and about sub communication. It's all coming from like an I don't give a fuck place. Like for those of you that watch my five hour tactical breakdown, I talk about how I banged a chick. I'm just gonna plug this in. Um, give me literally like 15 seconds here. Sorry, I don't want it to fucking die right in the middle here. Alright, so 
Sorry about that. I'm just gonna plug this fucking shit in here. So, I will edit that out at some point. You can like crop pieces out in YouTube, but I'm gonna probably upload it with that little 15 second thing uh, as part of it. Let's let this refocus. There we go. All right, I will edit that out after it's been uploaded because I'm gonna get this uploaded while this chick is here. Potential 777. All right, so what did I say to her? I crushed it with the ladies in Puerto Rico because I was tall. <laughs> They're all like, <laughs> they all come up yeah, and they say, right, do you speak Spanish? <laughs> I speak Spanish. Not really. Yeah. Okay, so I speak fluent Spanish now because I live in Puerto Rico and I taught myself. I will actually make a video on how you can learn a language fluently in like a couple days, no joke. I found this German guy who has patents on the method. I did it for Spanish, I did it for Russian, he has it for all kinds of languages. You can literally learn it in like a couple days. It sounds ridiculous. I'll make a video about that. So I learned fluent Spanish. Hello. Hello. I want you guys to see how she, how she reacted to me. Let me show you again. Hablo español. I'm a tall, I'm a six foot four woman. You know how much I destroy in Puerto Rico with the ladies? Do you know how much I destroy in Puerto Rico with the ladies? <laughs> They're all like, ha 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 ha. They all come up and they say, Do you speak Spanish? <laughs> and she's like loving it because it's coming from a, an alpha place, okay? Like I said, in the tactical game breakdown, I'm like openly like fucking a girl from another girl and then I fuck the other one and then I fuck the other one again. Because I'm owning all this stuff. And it, it's like very powerful. To be like talking about other girls liking you and shit when you're with when you're with a chick, okay? Just making sure this chick's not here yet. Okay. Speak Spanish. Hi there. Hablo español. Soy muy guapo y muy inteligente. So now I'm telling her like she knows some basic Spanish. So I just said soy muy guapo y muy inteligente. That means I'm very handsome and very smart. It's it's meant to be like a funny joke, right? Because I'm openly just bragging. And then I say, tangle penne grande, which means, and I have a big dick. And that's like the big, like, aha. I, I used to say this all the time in Puerto Rico, and they'd like laugh so much. Penne grande. Sí. Yeah, I was, okay. I was talking to this. So I just told her I have a big dick in Spanish, and she goes, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah guys. I was, I was, hold on, hold on. I'm basically, now fucking Chris Parker is trying to get her attention. Like, this is, I still pull the chick in like 10 minutes, start to finish, but it's like totally unnecessary for him to be like fucking wild carding shit in there. Like, or not wild card, like, like detracting, and like physically escalating on the girl. Like, I'm gonna blast shit out of this kid for ma many other reasons besides this kind of shit, but here you, here you get to see firsthand what a piece of shit this kid is. Now he's tapping her on the side. Like, I'm like talking dirty to this chick, and notice how I'm not just like talking about like garbage stuff that goes nowhere, and I'm, and I'm not like keeping a whole bunch of distance. Sexual things, pre selection things, talking about other girls liking me, um, telling her her fucking tits are awesome, that I wanna suck on them. Time, you know, all unapologetic in this, and we got Chris Parker trying to like, like a fucking female cock block. He's basically like being like a fat friend, like one of her fat friends, like tapping on the side, like trying to get her to talk to him. Tell us, tell us, tell us. I was gonna say, like, I, I hope you have a wonderful night. Again, look, look at right here. Like, I'm not gonna keep going. I'm not, I'm not threatened by this, and he never had a chance with this chick. But this is communicating, like, I do not respect, like, I have acknowledged that I know this kid. It's making me look like, it's like tooling me, okay? And I still have lots of value with the chick, and I still make the moves and make things happen. He has his arm around her right here, completely out of control, right? If he wasn't my friend, the correct move is I would come in, I would get in between him and her, and I'd be like, listen, this is my chick, get the fuck out of here, right? I've only been in like two fights in the past three years. One of them, I know how to fight really well. One of them I just posted about on my YouTube. It almost never will escalate into a fight. But I will tell the guy very clearly, like, and so will Sonny. Like, get the fuck out of here, okay? And I will like not let him into the space. In, th in this situation, I'm not, I'm not gonna like go fucking box this little fucking twerp out. Oh my God, like never ends with these girls. 
Hey, I'm just finishing up a business call. Can I can I just call you back in like five minutes? Are you here? How far away are you? Okay, just let me finish this. Just let me finish this call and then I'll, then I'll come get you. All right, all right, bye. Yes, sorry. It's like really fucking rude. She's here waiting. It's fine. I'm gonna take my time here. She's gonna be this. You will see her on the Instagram. Assuming it closes, probably will. All right, so let's see. Let's see our friend here being rude. You see very jealous. I'm not going. He's to chilling right here. I wish you a good night. Escalate. And she's like, "Where are you going?" Right? Because he he's trying to fucking game her on the side. Pissed me off. This kid deserves a nice fucking punch in the throat. All right, here we go. I'm I'm standing right here. I'm looking at I'm looking at my cameraman. Like, are you fucking kidding? This is, this is the kind of shit. Like I literally, I've cut off a whole bunch of friends and a whole bunch of wings over this kind of shit. This should never happen. I don't want this to be like the focus of the video here, but this should never happen. Like right now he's, he's like, his physicality and this kind of shit is like, especially right in my face, like right directly while I'm standing there is like totally, totally, totally ridiculous and out of control. Okay, so he, he's like presenting problems for me at this point. I'm serious. So listen. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Homeless guy. What the fuck does that say? I'm like, so listen. Right. <laughs> we're listening. No, wait, wait, we're listening. I'm sorry, baby. I don't have. I don't have. I don't have. Can I get it? Can I get it? This is this is my best friend. Actually, this is my best friend. He still won't fucking roll off. We've been best yeah, friends since childhood. We've been best friends for a long time. So take good care of him. Trust him. Take good care of him. Trust him. It's like it's like straight out of RSD. It's like. Corny, cringe. So listen. Yeah. So when I was okay, regaining her attention. Out there, right? I was DJing. I was DJing at uh, Rob John. John. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, I couldn't have made that. <laughs> My fucking editor. I told him just make it like a lapse in the sound, but it's like the sound they use when people are swearing on TV. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Wait, okay, here's gonna be the perfect night. Okay, I lean in, she starts fucking going after me kissing. Oh, I say this is what this is this was this is what would be the perfect night. So so sometimes I would do this when I'm like starting to set up the poll. When I preface my like poll talk with this is what's gonna happen okay, here's what's gonna happen. It's like setting a frame. Okay, and they're gonna gonna fall right into it. I don't know, I'm taking turn to your picture, ready? <laughs> One, here, wait, let's take a picture of this. Can I kiss? Can I see this? But wait! There's more! So, it's very rare in the first two hours, as we say, that you're gonna fuck a girl. Like, take the girl home to the hotel too early. First half doesn't matter. Yeah. First half doesn't matter. Surprise, motherfucker. Two. Three. Okay. Jake's. <laughs> Alright, put the water on, I'm gonna take a picture. Okay. You want, you mean a cold, cold water or hot water? What are you talking about? What, kind, you of water what kind of question is that? <laughs> he goes, cold water or hot water? <laughs> take a video. No, I'm not taking a video, I'm gonna take a picture. Take a picture, ready? <laughs> Wait, slowly, slowly. Slowly, bro. Slowly, bro. Peter, you're missing this little wet t-shirt contest. We need a super soaker or something. Okay. Nice. Got a nip exposed. Damn, I'm like halfway up now. See, okay, it's like automatic boner. Contrast, oh contrast that. Wait, make it like tight. Like pull it. Like show your midsection. Like make this tight and show your midsection. Yeah. Bro. That's like a fucking... That looks like a... Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could eat this look like a hair or something. <laughs> that was easy. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.